Nestled in a warehouse district of Costa Mesa, California, is Power Athlete HQ, a training laboratory that's concocted a potent recipe for performance out of time-proven ingredients. Their blueprint for developing athleticism is equal parts art and science. The philosophy blends creator John Wellborn's 10 years of NFL experience, Berkeley rhetoric studies, and empirical research on over 10,000 athletes across the globe. Today, we take you into the belly of the beast to learn how Power Athlete stands on the front lines battling bullshit and empowering performance around the world. I'm Ben Crookston, and this is Powerhouse. Each episode, we visit centers of excellence around the world to bring you the coaches, cultures, and practices that consistently deliver world-class performance. We train, we talk, we experience, so you can learn. All right, guys, we're here in Costa Mesa, California. We made it to Power Athlete HQ. We're gonna jump inside and connect with these guys. John Wellborn here, 10-year NFL vet, as well as the creator, CEO of Power Athlete, Luke Summers, Tex McQuilkin. On Powerhouse, we spotlight centers of excellence, facilities where this stuff's happening in real time. Power Athlete, it's not happening in real time. We're gonna have a pretty small facility, but most of the magic is happening right there uh, online and in effectively kind of a virtualized gym experience. So the coaching's there, the feedback's there, the programming's there, and all the athletes are engaged in a deep community where they're competing each day, they're looking at one another's results, and they're giving people feedback to continue kind of on their journey toward performance. Ooh, things heavy. This is our wall of fame, head of our branding. Helped us put us together, uh, just so that we'll never be forgetting who we are and what we do, and how necessarily uh, you know we get to where we want to go. Eat the week, which has become a big mantra for us. Uh, ironically, where it comes from is I was in here training, uh, listening to Lemmy, a little Motorhead, Eat the Rich, and I thought to myself, man, if we could ever have something like Eat the Rich in that song in terms of power athlete, and then around that time, it was when it was like Occupy uh, in New York. There was a picture in the New York Times and this kid holding up a sign that said, eat the rich. And I remember I went in the office and I was kind of putting it in, like kind of just looking at some stuff, trying to find a name for our training or for our contest. And I came up with the Occupy Strength and I put in Occupy and that thing came up and I just heard Lemmy and I was like, eat the week. Really our other major mission statement for power athletes is to battle the bullshit. I had you know, played 10 years in the NFL, had an opportunity to train with the best coaches in the world, had seen performance from the inside, uh, 360 degrees and knew what worked and what didn't and none of it was on the internet. Because most of the shit out there is wrong. People are really like fucking this thing up. And so we ended up coming out with our own training program and I really got into this and the whole mission was always battle the bullshit. This is basically like an episode of Hoarders and this stuff is from all over the place. At the same time, it all has a story. It's, 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 it's all got a purpose. So I think it'd be really cool to hear about maybe, you know, this belt squad or some other stuff that's in here. Where this belt squad, obviously from Westside Barbell. So I walked in and I saw Lou and uh, we started rapping a little bit. And he had one of his girls in there from uh, Ohio State that was a sprinter. So I saw her doing a lot of the Charlie Francis stuff and I even hit up Lou. I'm like, Lou, what are you stealing Charlie Francis's med ball at IGPP work? And he kind of smiled. And I asked the girl, I'm like, you know, uh, like, let me know some history. She's like, oh, in my second year, uh, this is what I was running, and now this is what I'm running. And she had shaved, you know, two or three, four seconds off of her 400 meter time since she had been there working with Lou. And I asked her, I'm like, what's the single biggest thing that you have done in your training that's like allowed you to progress? And she walked over to the belt squat. And I'm like, really, the belt squat? And she had been doing like these all these circuits on the belt squat. And she was like, this has been a, a key piece in my development. And I was like. No problem. And I watched her go do some other things and I, she was super dynamic and I was like, let's get one. If I'm looking at this place, one of the most important things to have in a gym, if you are serious about your gains, is a gold-plated mirror. So the CrossFit kind of deal skews mirrors. And if you go look at most of the gyms, the mirrors end up like 24 inches above and you can never see the bottom. Um, so we needed a way to show people what they were doing because people get stuck in these weird movement patterns and even though it feels natural, it's anything but. So normally what do you do? You gotta like take a picture, show them a video. And so I went out and sourced some mirrors at a garage sale. I just so happened to get a matching set of bitchin' mirrors and if you notice they're tilted so that you can actually see your feet. Because a big thing for us is that idea of toes forward, how you squat, what does it look like? Can you see symmetry in your movement? Are so what, you rotating? What movements would you recommend 
actually utilizing something like this and, and also conversely, uh, where does this have no place? Uh, for us, uh, squatting and press, overhead pressing is huge because when we watch people overhead press, a lot of people are really kind of off, yeah, do some crazy stuff, uh, especially with the squatting. Uh, we have one in front of the belt squat because I couldn't convey to people what they were doing wrong and it's kind of hard to kind of coach in here so we basically put a mirror in front of it and I was like, here's what you need to look for and here's for the pieces and it just allows for some really quick uh, feedback and the idea... And post-workout pump. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a given. As we kind of stumble into this back corner here, I'm struck by the crusty collection of, uh, of dumbbells here. A lot of people shy away from the three-digit dumbbells. Not here. The way I gauge a gym is actually by heavy, how heavy your dumbbells are. So if I walk into a gym and the heaviest dumbbells they have is 100 pounds, I'm leaving. So any gym worth its salt's gotta have at least 150s. So we got 150s, 140s, 130s. These little gems come from Sornex, our good friend Bert. Uh, these things are as cool an implement as we've seen in a long time. Um, so they're similar to a kettlebell, except you can put your hand dead center in the middle. You could do this type of stuff. You know, we used to do that a lot with, uh, with plates. So you would set and you would punch. But what makes it now is you can do it multiple ways. So these are actually really cool for offensive line play and especially for, for football players. And we have an interesting collection of bars. Coolest part of this whole thing is the bar holder. We actually hand fabricated this. If you notice, these are all pipes, all MIG welded. My most favorite bar in this entire place is this bar. So this safety squat bar is one of the original Fred Hatfield safety squat bars. Um, I found it at a local gym up the street, and so I joined the gym specifically for the bar. All of a sudden, one day I walk in, and the gym had been sold. And I was like, uh, so I meet the new owners, they come over, and they're like, oh, hey, we're the new owners, we bought the gym. And I was like, oh, well, what are you guys doing with the equipment? He's like, oh, we're getting rid of it all, we're gonna get new equipment. I was like, there's this bar that was kind of weird, can I buy it? And the guy was like, oh yeah, it's outside in the trash. I was like, really? So I ran outside, grabbed that out of the dumpster, threw it in my truck, brought it home and actually have an original Fred Hatfield bar. And then I saw the guy like, a month later and was like, why'd you want that piece of crap bar? And I was like, ah, sentimental value. You guys are at the core, these autodidact kind of DIY type dudes. And you look around this room, everything is that way. Forum, collar, trainer, look, you guys are early adopters of nearly anything that comes out. You guys are constantly looking to progress, to get better. And it's all with the intention of battling bullshit. We had a brick and mortar location and then we started working in this you know, virtual environment. And how do you necessarily coach somebody in a virtual environment without some form of feedback? We needed to find uh, an able-bodied partner like Train Heroic because one, I needed a way to contact people, I needed them to contact me, I needed a way to interact, I needed a way to skill track. I mean, everything that Train Heroic provided for us was what I was trying to build. And everybody gets stuck in this idea, I'm an entrepreneur, I gotta do it all. So I gotta have a brick and mortar, I gotta train, I gotta program, I gotta do all of this, I gotta do everything. And what ends up doing is you end up spreading yourself too thin and you suck at everything. Yeah. Or you're moderately good at all these little pieces. What Power Athlete's about is finding your wheelhouse and stay in your wheelhouse and be the best you can in your wheelhouse. When you stand up straight, what I really want you to focus on is that the weight's on your hips, and you almost have to, you can see how like overextended, it's an unnatural position in this. So what I'm trying to do is squeeze my butt into that position, which is the natural position it pushes you in once we get heavier. So stand here, feet underneath, you'll notice that I actually feel more stable when my toes are forward, big toes in the ground, from there challenge. I want you to go forward, forward, forward. There you go. Now all the way back. Feel your kind of chicken neck too. So now as you're starting to get a little tired, you feel like you're arching. So pull the top ab down, squeeze the butt. Whew. There you go. Cool. Just do a couple uh, good mornings. Hips back. There you go. All I want you to do, step up, step down. There you go. Now go left, right. There you go. That'll fuck you up, huh? Because yeah. it's not the stepping up, it's the stepping down. Yep. I mean, even when you switch, there's like a little torque on the hip. You yeah. Square up. Squeeze your everything butt. Everything right. Squeeze your butt. People get into this thing, they constantly want to get pulled this way. So I always think about leveraging it where you are in position. So when you're at the bottom, 
As you go up, I want you to think about trying to drive your butt back a little bit. It's a chest bump. There you go. And that's good. Then you can also do, because now it's pulling you this way. So you almost have to come down, <laughs> drive against it. Always think every time, standing up, pulling the top, ab down, flexing the butt. Slow and smooth, smooth is fast. Go a little wider. There you go, sit back, 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 back. There you go. Oh man, that feels amazing on the hips. This thing could be used for torture, but I think for somebody who likes to squat, hasn't been able to do it for a long time due to injury, this is heaven. Good measure of a coach. Now at the end of the day, training, especially for performance, you don't have the opportunity to necessarily sit out and take three, four months off training. And so the more you can reach into different tools in the toolkit, use these things flexibly to create solutions, and that's what a coach does. Now, you get to use those mirrors. Thanks for watching Powerhouse on Train Heroic. Make sure to subscribe below, right here, so that you can continue to get killer content about coaching and training tips that are gonna help you elevate your game. I have comfort in the amount of repetitions and the way we've coached things, that when they get on that big stage, that they're ready. This is what we came here for, get it now. These coaches that just regurgitate one size fits all type information, it's absolutely wrong. We can teach them how to fix it, which is 